Hello Internet, Retro Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to be revisiting the SNES from the light mod we did before. Link to that video in the description. This one will be a little bit different, and we'll find out that things don't always go according to plan. So, let's head over to the workbench and see what we have for today. Here it is, the SNES. And that's the light we modded before. And that doesn't look too bad from here, so let's open it up and get to the good stuff. For this, we have six screws to take out using the 4.5 millimeter security screwdriver. Can't forget our parts bin so we don't lose anything. We'll flip the console over carefully as to not throw those screws around. Let's see here. Yep, all six are there. Lift off the top of the case to reveal the inside. And set that off to the side for now. So here's what I noticed in the last video that got me a little concerned. See that water damage? And the rust here? Let's get that cleaned up so it doesn't cause any more damage. We'll remove the game ejector and set that off to the side for now. <laughs> and careful so we don't lose that spring. Now we'll remove the two Phillips screws holding in the power switch. And this cable here. There shouldn't be a clip or anything holding this in, so it should come right out. We'll have two more screws that are the same as the last ones to remove this metal plate. A little rust here, and we'll take care of that later. Someone has been in here before me. They either cross-threaded or torqued those screws to do that to those posts. Anyway, we'll have four longer screws to take out next. Two on the 62-pin connector. And two in the back. We'll take that controller port out too while we're at it. And one last screw holding down that board. Now we can take the board out and get a better look at that damage. There should be another metal plate on the bottom. Next we can remove this heatsink. For that there's... One, two, three, four, and five. That one's a little different. Now before we take out that last one, let's get that screw that's holding that transistor down. Now that should slide right off. They replaced the thermal compound. <laughs> I should have known, but this isn't the version of the SNES that has the removable 62 pin connector. And this is where my plan starts to fall apart. Maybe it was the fact that I was itching to try out this new desoldering iron, but I wanted to get that connector out in order to make sure the damage wasn't too bad. I need more practice with that new tool, so I decided to desolder the way that I've done it numerous times before. With flux and a desoldering wire. I'll admit, I spent the next couple of hours trying to get all of those pins free. Sadly, I admit defeat. So I'll hope the damage isn't bad under that connector and get back to cleaning. 
For the board, I'll use isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to thoroughly clean the board and that connector. You want to put a small amount of alcohol in a separate container so you don't contaminate your whole supply. Of course, you can always add more to that container as need be. Now we can clean that transistor and heatsink of its old thermal compound with again isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. Next, let's tackle that rusty metal plate. I tried the toothbrush I was using on the board in hopes that it was just surface rust. That didn't work, so I broke out the number one medium grade steel wool scrub. Now, I kept my finger behind so I wouldn't bend up that metal as I was polishing. Next, I use a flathead screwdriver to get to the cracks and corners. After that, we can reapply some new thermal compound. Just a small dab will do it. And we'll replace the heat sink. Remember, the screw for this is the only one. It should have two small washers on it. Carefully flip that over and get our four screws in that silver looking one. Now I'll put the silver one in first just to get it out of the way. The order you put these in doesn't matter, so long as you get the heat sink lined up right with the first couple. Now we can put the board back in the case. There's the first screw we'll put back in. I notice the post is a little broken. This plastic is getting close to 30 years old and is a little brittle. Next, we'll put in the four longer silver looking screws. Two in the back, two on the connector. Replace the metal plate we polished and the two screws on that. Reconnect the cord for the power switch and the two screws for that. At this point, I noticed the posts were cracking pretty bad, and I wanted to make sure that it would be able to handle being used. Nope. Those screws will have to come back out and we'll use some 5 minute epoxy to fix those as best we can. These are just falling apart. I'll set aside the pieces that'll get epoxied. Uh, sorry for being off camera here. I was more concerned about not using too much. One piece down, one to go. Applying epoxy to the sides and the bottom. And carefully putting that back. I'll just cut to when it's all dry and ready to go. I put some on the other post too. Looked like it needed it. Let's only torque those down as much as needed and hope that epoxy holds. Now we can replace the game ejector. Now 
This can be a pain, and at this point, I just wanted to get it back together. So I'm rushing and fumbling. I almost forgot that controller port. It will help to take that ejector out again. Luckily, it goes right back in. Replace the top of the case, flip it over for the last six security screws. After this, I'm going to hook it up to a tester TV to make sure I didn't mess anything up with my desoldering and resoldering of that 62 pin connector. Still works, and now the inside is clean. So, like I said, sometimes things don't go according to plan. And instead of continuing to try and remove that connector and possibly ruining it in the process, I admitted defeat. But I did get the board cleaned up to the point where I don't think any more damage will happen. I hope you liked this video. And if you really enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, as it really helps out me and the channel quite a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.